flatten ears to ground, curve shoulder into the hollow of bones of earth beneath you. Hear stories travelling the roads of others, like the hum of a thousand tiny engines. Step over fence lines and valleys that hold more than water. Follow the fading shriek of siren, a sigh from another room, the conversation of birds. Do this before you leave, and our town falls away, shrinking into grid lines and patchwork paddocks, before the fingers of peninsulas and forking rivers fit inside the palm of your hand, before we are lost in the crumpled exhale, a tooth flung to the wind and the only question left is, did you have a good world? Before all of that, close to the nameless streets that lead to mouths full of untapped words, tuned to the hum of a thousand tiny engines. This is One Hour with I'm Regan and spending an hour today with Hamish Fleming. Hamish is a painter uh, and he is involved with Mindshare. Mindshare is an organisation that groups together people with lived experience of mental health challenges and supports them through various forms of art. It's a really beautiful thing and I've got links to Mindshare in the promotion for this show if you're interested in checking it out. So Hamish is joining me now. He's a really good painter. He paints in a realist style, but um, features perhaps hyper-realism in his paintings in that in this traditional realist style, he features elements of everyday life that point to his challenges with his own mental health. So Hamish, thank you so much for joining me. So in preparing for the show, in our, in our discussions leading up to this interview, yeah. you mentioned that you really, really like music. It's, yeah. It's very yeah. influential for you. <laughs> Absolutely. I um, Yeah, uh, music for me, I'm just a massive music fan, but I don't play, I mean, I've played instruments in the past, but I don't play anything. I don't, I'm not in any bands. That's, it's just something I really, really like um, and always have. And yeah, every, every exhibition is always paired with a few artists here and there in terms of like influences. When people ask me my artistic influences, I have to remember what they're asking is, which painters do you like and not who do you listen to? <laughs> uh, yeah, because that gets kind of awkward because I'll sit there like, oh, I thought you'd say Lucian Freud, not whoever this person is. And I'm like, no, nah, but they sound good. Well, that's interesting. So you listen to music while you're creating your art? Like that's, you're nodding emphatically there. My, um, yeah, I, I listen to music uh, a lot. Uh, my... Last Spotify wrapped, my friend calculated it down that I spent a third of the entire year streaming music. So, And given you're asleep for a third of your life, yeah. that only leaves <laughs> one third of your waking exactly. time. <laughs> yeah. There's one, there's one third of my life that I'm – you know, conscious for where I'm not listening to music. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a preferred genre for creating or um, what patterns have you noticed? So I am very much trying to guide my mood when I'm like, for if I'm working, I'm trying to guide my mood. So I'm like, sometimes I'm like thinking I need to sort of chill out, slow down a bit, get into a more critical mindset. And then other times it's like, all right, we got to get stuff done today. We got to, we got to get that that BPM up and start cranking through work as much as we possibly can, and that's that you know that's where we get all the super fast techno, and as opposed to sort of the more calm contemplative mood music, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a tool. So, well, coming back to synesthesia mm. a bit, how do you experience music? What is it like viscerally for you? Movement, like very literally like things are sound like different motion so i can visualize that and that comes through in my work as well my sort of more abstract elements but yeah there's a there's a degree of there's there's easily a a mental visual that pops up um and it's it's movement it's a movement um so it's very much motion which I think is why I like it so much in relation to painting, because painting is very 
heavily drawn in on motion and rhythm and the the excellent paintings are always, you know, you can talk about the rhythm of the brushstrokes or the rhythm of the composition. And so music for me is perfect for that, you know, translates. It's, it's not a jump in my brain. It's a cohesive translation. Mm. Now your, your paintings are very good. Doesn't cut it. They're, they're very good. (laughs) Thank you. Um, and you have got an exhibition on at the moment, which we'll talk yep. about a little later on, as well as Mindshare. Uh, yeah. We'll touch on that too. So how did you come to be involved in Mindshare? And I guess perhaps preceding that, uh, your painting. Yeah. So I'll just cover Mindshare just so we got like a little bit of an intro into that. So um, Mindshare is a mental health uh, sort of focused exhibition program um, across multiple venues in the city. Um, I entered into it because I make a lot of art that's subtly or unsubtly about um, mental health. And, you know, I mean, that it's aptly titled. It's a mind share, people sharing how their minds work. So everything from neurodivergency to um, various mental health struggles and triumphs. In terms of how did I get into painting, I come from a very academic family, actually. My mum is a nurse, my dad is a scientist, and my brother's an engineer. So I'm kind of a little bit of a wild card. You're the black sheep? I am not what they signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was a little, you know, they'll be sitting in dinner table conversations being like, I'm doing lab reports today while I'm setting up this department in medicine. I'm I don't know, studying bridges. What do engineers do? Um, <laughs> then I'll be sitting there being like, well, I've painted some pictures and now I'm going to try and turn them into some money. <laughs> so, yeah, a bit of a wild card. I, I make a lot of work that basically uses the pre-established traditions of painting because when you become a painter, especially if you're a realist painter like I am, you're stepping into this craft, which has got thousands and thousands of years of tradition behind it. And, you know, as much as you can absolutely wreck that and you're free to go with it, you can also pay attention and build off. It. You know, there's a foundation that's been established for better or for worse. Like knowing the rules before you can break them. Exactly, exactly. And it's like, it's not so useful to just break things as it is to sort of use them in different ways. We recycle. Art is a lot of recycling. Um, But I use the traditions of still life and portraiture, which are these really old classical formats to go into depth about sort of more emotional stuff as opposed to more how something looks and to address contemporary life and stuff that we It's not even the stuff in capital letters that we don't want to talk about. It's not like capital T taboos. It's just stuff that we don't discuss. We just don't because we we don't think about it. We don't consider it enough, but it's the stuff that binds us together. So what do you identify with in terms of your mental health? So I've got sort of PTSD anxiety and I have ADHD and major depressive disorder. What it turned out was it's ADHD. It's the hyperactivity, the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So that sounds like a real kind of contradiction in a way. You've got the downers of the anxiety and depression, but ADHD is a real upper. How do they interrelate? It's just, it's tricky because ADHD is like you're wired all the time. I mean, taking... ADHD medication is something that sort of steadies you down, but it's literally a high-grade stimulant, which is weird. So it's like, I'm sad, but I'm going fast. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Double speed. And that's where you get the problems with PTSD-based anxiety and also just general anxiety. It's a weird little mix. It's probably the area of my mental health I understand the least about but i've done the most work in trying to get through but when you have things like spirals like that usually slow steadily building anxiety that comes from somewhere i can sometimes get that out of nowhere 
on a split second and it picks up immediately. So my brain just takes it, runs with it. And we can go from, you know, chill and walking through the city and to completely high strum, wired and stressed in a matter of seconds, which is tricky. So you mentioned that your paintings have underlying metaphor uh, <laughs> that reference your mental health struggles. Yep. Can you take one of your paintings and talk me through that? Yep. So the easiest one for me to jump to is I've got a very classical looking still life of a set of dishes, which looks normal and pleasant from a distance, but they're dirty dishes. They're the dirty dishes that I forget to put in, for example, the dishwasher because I lack executive function as part of having ADHD. So I literally, I know, and I know enough to make a painting about it, but not enough to actually get up and put it in the dishwasher, which is incredibly frustrating. I'm the king of locking my keys in my own car, for example. But yeah, so that's a, that's a really on the nose type one, sort of having low energy, low executive function. But also a lot of the images I create have a lot of, basically we hold quiet tension in a tone. So we hold a level of intensity that is not in your face. It's not brutal. It's, well, a little bit, but it's not so punchy. It sits there. It's underlying. It's a steady level of tension, what we call delicate tension. And, well, speaking of delicate tension, we are going to hear about the three people Hamish would like to spend an hour with throughout the course of this show very, very soon. in a behavior station light years from civilization I was born in oblivion half Balinese, half Libyan my father was a vector my mother was a specter as earthmen battle for their skins I come down with the aliens The red age, the demented photostat age, the time of no room. We've broken the genetic code and left it bleeding by the road where murderers loom. You've changed your face, you've changed your scent, you've even changed your fingerprint. Images anything But with all this electricity You can't change your publicity The lies the many sing Down in the green plucks Under a spike of light Stop at the slave port Enter the death resort No stimulation Nothing but manifest Re-simulation Deep out but don't get caught Great. 
grapes of wrath while running down the cycle path. Is this not a cruel world? Good morning, little schoolgirl. It's the red age. It's the red age. It's the red age. Spending an hour today with Hamish Fleming, Adelaide painter, and we're just about to kick off the first of his three people that he'd like to spend an hour with. It's Iggy Pop. So why? Iggy Pop is one of my personal icons. I just, I mean, the music was fantastic. He went through everything from like establishing punk to 80s, 80s pop with like those synths and stuff. He was flexible. He's you know, he can cross through all these genres. He's open to change and then applies that to himself. You know, he, he went from, yep, punk music is real music and it's the only thing I'm going to make to making pop songs in the 80s. It's a full 180 to making a little bit of country in the 90s. What? Um, and I think that, you know, that flexibility is just incredible. Also, I love music, just big fan. And the the albums feel different to me. Like the, the, the album, The Idiot, is an absolute like it's like a swagger of an album it's like it's like like the the sort of cocky walk that people do down the street and they're like yeah you know what i am god that's that motion again isn't it yeah yeah so i love iggy pop if you got to spend an hour with iggy pop how would you want to spend it i want to paint his portrait that's what i want to do if i ever by any remote chance get the opportunity i will go for it but i would love to do that because portrait painting is like or portrait sittings is like one of the most intimate weird abstract versions of an interview it's so personal and people react to it so differently you know i've i've had some people who are like fundamentally this is very strange because you're just watching me and it's a bit weird um or as i've had other people being like i feel more acceptable as a human being now because I didn't have to do anything. You just sat and acknowledged that I exist. And I think, you know, that's part of what we need sometimes is just for someone to go, yep, I see you. And I'm going to respond to that mm-hmm. in some way as well. Um, and I would love to see how he reacts. I'm just mm-hmm. super curious. And I feel like it's the best kind of artistic conversation I could have with, an artist that I admire so much. And it would be a really cool portrait as well. No idea how that would come out. Probably quite gritty. It's me and it is him. So, yeah. Would you paint it in your style where you're kind of hiding that hyper hyper realism in it? The quiet tension? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd be like... What would you put in it for that? I'd, look... Naturally, it being e pop, it's going to be shirtless. It's the classic icon e pop. Hasn't worn a shirt in 30 years. I would, in a real contrast of how he's usually depicted in 
media and promotion and everything, I would sit him down calmly and just have him probably either looking off to the distance or making eye contact. A calm Iggy Pop, which seems like an oxymoron, but I feel like that would be something. It would be something special. He's sort of, I, I think he must be incredibly resilient. I mean, no one expected him to still be alive to begin with. Early punk scene, way back in 1968, still going strong. That's insane. So I feel like he must be somewhere in his psyche. He must have a quiet resilience. And I want to find that. And you've chosen an Iggy Pop song to go with Iggy Pop. I absolutely have. I chose Fun Time because it's a little bit silly. It's a lot of fun. It's a fun time. And it's still got, it's like a halfway point between the sort of more poppy stuff and it still has this kind of little bit of dark punk in there, which is kind of fun. It's a a good combination. And I feel like if I was going to have that interaction, have that portrait, that would be replaying in my brain the entire time. What sort of movements go with Fun Time? Fun Time is, it's kind of punchy. I feel like it's like if you've ever seen those those weird optical illusion houses where you look like you're walking on an angle, I feel like it's that, but if it was in reality, sort of like walking on a 45-degree angle and the ground is moving. So it's disorientating in a sense. Which is really interesting considering you want to paint Iggy being calm. Very grounded, yeah. I want to, you know, I want to stop the, stop the ship. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Iggy Pop, fun time. Fleming today, Adelaide painter and participant of Mindshare. So Hamish, moving into your second person that you'd love to spend an hour with, who is that? 
The second person is Alex Cameron. Tell me about Alex. I don't know Alex. So Alex Cameron is an Australian-born musician. I think he's based in the US now. He's done four albums, first two, big fan, second two, me. But he's an Australian-born musician, definitely one of my influences in terms of tone. And he's spent several years as a paid assistant before he did you know, music to a criminal investigator and was so irked by everything that he saw that he just went, nope, nope, I'm getting out. So he makes, in terms of shining a light on things we don't want to talk about, gold star to him because he really makes a bunch of music and writes a bunch of songs about sort of the gross, shameful end of humanity at times. Also writes some really beautiful music as well, dark a lot of the time. But it's, it's packaged up in this really poppy sound. Uh-huh. So you'll listen to it. You'll happily listen to it because it sounds like a pop song. And it's great. It's like, oh, I'm grooving along. And then you sort of start hearing the lyrics and you're like, holy shit. Did someone write a <laughs> song about that? That's, can, you, can you do that? Oh, my God. And so the first two albums, especially the first album, not so much the second album, was very much him taking on personas. So the first album is him as a disgraced showman slash businessman. And on the album cover, he's wearing like a 1970s sort of businessman, Wolf of Wall Street type suit and old age makeup. And it goes through as an album and it's addressing all this type of stuff that we don't talk about. We don't think about it, but it's sort of dark, gritty, bit gross. Like what? Like ambition and people feeling cheated. And he writes a lot about the disgusting behavior of men really brutally as well. Not sugarcoated at all. It's confronting. And I think especially in arts and for that to be coming out of pop music is insane. It is confronting. It is uncomfortable. It is not pleasant at all. This is, quite frankly, a few of the tracks are disgusting. They are. But it really exposes it all. And it's coming from a lot of personal experience of the things he saw doing the criminal investigator work. And it's delicately packaged up in pop sound so that it's more palatable. And I think I have a great deal of admiration for that to take something so fundamentally vile and package it in a way where it is going to get to people. They are going to look at it or listen to it. And it's sort of, instead of having super, super confronting work that is completely packaged up as a confrontation, which kind of turns people aside, you sort of lure them in a little bit. And then we start talking about these sorts of things. Which is what you do in your work. Yeah. So does Alex kind of set the tone for your work? Yeah, in, in, I reckon a couple of tracks of the first album solidly influenced me. I'm not quite going into that level of terrible societal behavior. I'm more sort of like, we're all a bit gross, just as human <laughs> beings. We leave dishes everywhere. We, we have status quo and whatnot, but fundamentally at the end of the day, we're all a bit gross. We're all a bit disgusting. We're all a bit kind of ridiculous. But also, the modern world is ridiculously intense and how any of us are getting through in this is highly commendable. But yeah, no, I reckon he had a solid... The subject matter is so boundary-pushing. And it's the way he sort of dives into these personas. It's, it's confronting. It's definitely a confronting listen. But the, the track that I've picked is actually my favourite song, which is called Gone South. And it's not so much that whole sort of persona and it's not as as disgusting. It's more industrial soundscape with this dark, weird, metaphorical poem that kind of spills out over the top of it. And I love that. I absolutely love that. There's like this gritty background with this sort of delicately, almost literature-approved poem going over the top. So... Given what you've said you like about Alex, this song is an interesting choice because Mm. it doesn't seem to reflect what you've said about why you like Alex. Yeah. What's the connection there? This is 
it's the second Alex Cameron song I heard. And the connection is that combination of industrial coarseness and more classical elements really resonates for me with my work. And the way I, it's so hard to describe for me, but the way this track sounds is in an abstract sense, the mood that I developed as I developed my style. And it was because I was listening to this track over, over again, right as I started out. And the way I'd spend an hour with him would be to take a cab ride through a densely populated city. Because surely he looks out the window and has observations of some form, and I would love to have that exchange. Cab ride through a densely populated city, because it would take an hour, get from one side to the other, and it would just be fascinating, I think. This next track is Alex Cameron's Gone South. It was the day, and then the shot came. From the sky, and then it was the night. But nothing in me was tired, so I did not sleep. Instead, I waited in the book. Sad and warm, but no one came except a rabbit and some dog. But they did not give Jay as far as I could see. They lost their appetites too. Spend some time making bird call, but none responded out of fear. I dug myself a spider's hole, and it was hungry work. And then I ate from my geo stash. catch up on demand via the app or listen live online at 3dradio.com. I'm Regan and this is One Hour With With You Until Five O'Clock and spending an hour today with Hamish Fleming. Hamish is about to share the third person that he would like to spend an hour with. So Hamish, who is that? My third person is Alison Mosshart, who is one half of my favourite band, which is the two-piece outfit known as The Kills is a grungy garage rock band that started in the early 2000s and she's the vocalist and sort of backup guitarist and also is in another band with Jack White of the White Stripes called The Dead Weather. 
And she's also, on top of that, she's a poet and a painter. So in terms of crossing music and painting, she seems very fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So before we go into that, how did you first encounter or experience Alison? So my favourite film is a film called Asthma, which is a small, relatively small budget indie film. It's a flawed movie, and I think that's part of what I like about it. But the ending track after this really powerful ending, which I'm not going to talk about because spoilers, is a song by The Kills called Black Balloon. And it's this really interesting, again, heavily metaphorical, dark, grungy rock song. And it starts with this like clapping intro and it just, it clicked something in my brain right away. And then I started doing research and listening to a lot of The Kills and re- learning about Alison Mossart, who's the vocalist. And she was in another rock band earlier in the 2000s. And then she met the guitarist, um, Jamie Hintz in London and went, yeah, you know what? We're going to start a band. So I'm going to go on tour for a bit, but I'm going to come back. I'm just going to move to London. We're just going to figure this out somehow. And she made these, what she called audio collages on a cassette tape she took with her on tour. They were just little snippets of audio and sent them back to the guitarist to sort of be like, maybe this? So the first time I sort of learned about Alison Mosshart individually would have been listening slash watching interviews with the kills and hearing about like this crazed determination to just create across poetry, across sound, across music and across painting. And it's just amazing. I have so much admiration for her. I think just an incredible person. Do you see connections between her music and her poetry and her various outputs? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the her painting, actually, a lot of the Kills album covers on the inside are um, Alison Mossart's painting or photography, collage, etc. cetera. Um, and it's, there's, you can clearly sort of see the link. Like it makes a lot of sense when you open up that album. In the, in the tone, there's like a, a coarseness, there's a messiness, there's like a classic sort of grungy spirit of working with what you've got in terms of materials, high ambition, high drive, maybe not the highest budget. Yeah, and you can, you can see her translating her life into art very personally, very directly, very unfiltered. And absolutely, in her poetry, it just, it's straight through, super honest goes super direct and then in the music she's not as clear in the music because she's sort of either in bands with multiple other people or bands with another person but in the songwriting you can hear it it's just this it's a lot of the time it's quite poetic and it's either poetic or it's direct really direct and so yeah i think she translates all of those art forms really beautifully. And it's just this drive that she has to create, to put things out there. She's unstoppable. It's insane. All of the people you've chosen have all got that gritty realness and yet, and work with that metaphor and underlying stuff that people don't talk about. Yeah. Yeah. You're very aware of that, aren't you? You came into this knowing with that awareness. I I did. Yeah, I did come into this with an awareness because I, I think it's super important. I like, as a painter, um, we are beyond the point where we need pretty paintings. That's just not their job anymore. We're beyond the point where we need particularly realistic paintings. I mean, I like doing it because I think it translates easier to an audience. But, you know, we have cameras. If we want a photo, we take a photo. If we want to document things, we'll film them. But, you know, we're beyond the point of needing pretty paintings. If we're going to paint now. There's something about a painting, like this Mm old-fashioned traditional form of art that shows um, modern issues. It's that juxtaposition. That juxtaposition. And what's great is um, like packaging up something that's made about the disgusting parts of society in a pop tune you take something that's all old and traditional and beautiful as a medium and then you can show people things they didn't really want to see in that medium the centerpiece for my exhibition is a painting of my couch which is a 30 year old couch now that is quite beat up 
and has a lot of evidence of all the very normal but unspoken about parts of my life that are very standard issue for contemporary life. Again, packaged up wonderfully in the classical genre of painting. What song have you chosen, Hamish, to go with Alison Moss Hart? I have chosen a Kills song because, again, Kills' favourite band. It was my introduction to Alison Moss Hart. Has my whole heart. Um, and I've chosen Let It Drop, which is when I'm a little bit fed up with most things, I will chuck on this song. This song is like punchy and determined. It's got this thumping, you'll hear it in a moment, this thumping heavy drum in it. And it's it feels like the point of almost giving up, but knowing full well that that's absolutely not an option, nor is it going to happen. What movement goes with that? This is hitting something. This is like, non-violently, this is like thumping a hand on a wall. And then also at the same time, I always think liquid running down a wall, being slapped or thumped at the same time. I'm seeing this at the Mona or yeah. somewhere like that. Liquid coming down the wall, like a really dry gyp rock wall with some sort of sludge slowly creeping down it and someone's pounding away at it. So almost defeated, but no, absolutely not. So the song, what is that again? This is The Kills featuring, of course, Alison Mosshart with Let It Drop. Hamish Fleming. 
And Hamish's three people have been Iggy Pop, Alex Cameron, Australian musician now based in the US, and Alison Mosshart from The Kills. Now, Hamish, let's talk about you. You've got an exhibition. Yes. Yes, there is an exhibition. But firstly, let's just touch on Mindshare. Mm-hmm. Uh, is anything in your exhibition from any of your Mindshare work? Uh, it's independent of Mindshare, but the work that I had in Mindshare very much echoed my exhibition work because... It was a mental health exhibition, so I really got to go for it. One of my pieces for Mindshare, I did two still life. Um, One was a stack of dirty dishes, and the other was a set of noise-cancelling headphones and blackout sunglasses. So we sort of got more mentally health-focused for Mindshare, whereas this one sort of goes more into what does contemporary life look like these days? What does it look like to be a person of my age? And I made a lot of work about my own life, mostly because it is one subject that I have the right to make work about. In fact, I have the most exclusive right to make work about and that I'm most qualified to address. And it's the most accessible to me. You know, I can't really observe someone else's life. I mean, I could, but it'd be weird. Depends how close you get. Depends how close you get. Exactly. (laughs) I can do that to whatever degree I deem necessary with my own life. I mean, word of caution on stepping back and observing your own life. You can be interferent, okay? If you if your life starts going a bit not great, step in and save yourself. Don't just go, wow, this will make for great subject matter. That's <laughs> not smart. <laughs> yeah. Learn that one of just like, ah, oh, wow, things are going to go very badly in like a week unless I do something. Let's sit back and watch it happen. No, no, act, act, a little bit of self-preservation. Just a smidge, just a tr- as a treat, because you've been good. <laughs> yeah. Your exhibition, uh, where's it on? What's it called? Tell me the details there. All the details. So my exhibition is called Internal on at Collective Haunt Inc. So level 168, the parade Norwood, right on my parade. And it's open until the 3rd of December, Wednesday to Saturday, 11 till 4. Just under two weeks left. Yeah, we just we got, we got just under two more weeks. So everyone should go check it out. So Hamish, if people want to spend more time with you, keep up to date with your work and see what you're doing, how can they do that? So I've got Instagram, of course, at hfleming underscore creative. I've also got a website, which has got a little bit of information. It also has a contact sheet, hflemingartist.com dot squarespace.com i'm very active on my socials if you just send me a message i'll get in touch with you otherwise i'll be gallery sitting on the 30th of november and on the 2nd of december okay what do you mean gallery sitting uh literally sitting in the gallery from 11 till 4 (laughs) hamish thank you so much for joining me today thank you so much for having me this has been fantastic and this has been one hour with hamish fleming If you're a creative and you're interested in being on the show, or if you just want to keep up to date, then head to the socials and search One Hour with Reagan, R-A-E-G-A-N. As always, I'll be back next Monday. Have yourself a fabulous week. The weather's getting better. Well, fingers crossed. (laughs) Perfect to get out there and see and do something in our fabulous city. Catch you later. Take off your clothes. Throw out all your files. Feel the earth between your toes